Welcome everyone to this week's edition, which is on the road of Military Trailblazer Office Hours. Uh, thanks so much for taking time out of your Wednesday evening to spend it here in the spirit of community mentorship and of course learning. I'm your host, Dave Nava. I'm a lead solution engineer at Salesforce and a military trailblazer. Each week we invite a co-host or sometimes co-hosts to take part in the conversation so we can leverage their experience, their expertise, and their unique perspectives. Uh, the focus for tonight's session is exploring part-time Salesforce roles and product ownership. And so uh, what I'd like to do now is welcome and briefly introduce our co-host for tonight's session, Mary Crozier. Mary is the CEO and founder of Client Cloud Care. Client Cloud Care is a Salesforce consultancy powered by military spouses. She's also a Salesforce app founder and a product owner, having created the Ombudsman Cloud Care app listed on the App Exchange, which is super cool. It is awesome having you co-hosting office hours with me. Mary, welcome. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Yeah, we've been planning this for a little while, so it's good to, to meet you virtually, and uh, we'll have a good session tonight. Um, you know, before, before we get started, because I know Mary has some slides that she wants to present, um, I always like to briefly explain the purpose of office hours. And so if you're attending for the first time, welcome. Um, these sessions are an informal get together for gathering with military trailblazers and allies. Everyone's invited to explore non-technical Salesforce career and branding related topics in order to help you achieve your professional development and career related goals. And so for the next hour, this is your opportunity for collaborative mentorship. Everyone on the call is encouraged to step up and help answer questions from your perspective, which of course provides additional diversity of experience to the answers given. And so uh, throughout tonight's session, please do keep an eye on the chat window. I um, spend you know, most of the week gathering little snippets from LinkedIn and Twitter, and I'll post those in chat throughout the session, which shares you know, interesting articles, employment opportunities, volunteer opportunities, events, things of that nature. Now, if you wanna ask a question at any point during today's session, this is your session, so please feel free to do so. If you don't feel comfortable speaking up, no worries, just post your questions in chat and I will ask them for you. Otherwise, go ahead and raise your hand in the app and I'll take you in the order uh, that you come in and I'll be monitoring that throughout the session. And so with that covered, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back over to Mary before we open the floor. Um, and she's gonna, she's gonna walk us through her, her amazing story and, and uh, share some slides with us. So over to you, Mary. Okay, great. Um, my Trailblazer story began in 2018 when we were living in Japan. And um, I was working um, part-time as a creative consultant for a biomedical engineering consultancy and um, doing a lot of branding, website development, um, and also taking that time to build out um, and continue to learn um, three coding languages while I was there and other platforms. And um, while I was doing that, I discovered Salesforce um, and I was looking for some some options to provide for my consultant, for my clients. But I didn't, I saw it and I didn't know if it was the right resource for them. I sort of moved past it and thought, well, this is really cool. Um, I wish they could afford to use it, what have you at the time. And not long after I mentioned it, another military spouse said, well, what about Trailhead? Have you checked out Trailhead? And I had no idea what she was talking about. And uh, so she pointed me in the right direction and I got started on Trailhead. A month later, I finished that admin trail and was ready to get my certification, but uh, we were then PCSing uh, within a couple of weeks. And so I decided to put it off and wait until we moved back to the States. So we moved, we were in temporary lodging as I'm sure all of you are familiar with, we actually ended up in temporary lodging for quite a few months. Um, but while I was there, um, I took the admin course, which I highly recommend, um, the two weeks. Uh, I did it virtually, studied a lot, and took the certification exam um, about two months after, after the move. From there, I began volunteering with an organization and I think it's important to, to note that the organization found me because I put out on LinkedIn that I was seeking an opportunity to work with a mentor and that I was hoping to find an organization that gave back to military um, members. So uh, that's what I found, which was wonderful. Um, and I got some great experience working with a senior admin there 
and um, providing some assistance to them. I knew at the time that we were going into a command tour and that I, my time was limited. Uh, so I wasn't looking for a full-time Salesforce career at that time. Uh, so it was a great fit. Uh, so through 2019, I volunteered. Um, I started doing some freelance work. Because of that original post, somebody connected me with a senior consultant who had freelance opportunities for me. And so I started do, doing independent consultant work from day one, really. From there, uh, we went into our command tour, so busy time in our lives, continued to do these freelance projects and got busier and busier with that. Then we um, came into 2020 and some sprint opportunities came up to start thinking about projects. And I started thinking about doing a personal project, you know, planning, that life 2.0, the transition out and start thinking about, okay, I've got this skill, I've got this experience. Now, you know, planning that next phase of actually working more than just part-time. <laughs> With everything that happened in the spring of 2020, pandemic, TR crisis, I, um, I thought, hmm, I, I might need a job sooner than I realized. And so, so I got a little serious about that and started interviewing in earnest. I ended up taking on some more serious roles committed with specific clients. That was also when we started our app. Here I am now. Um, I turned that into just providing more for uh, clients and then adding on employees to that. No, that's fantastic. And, and I appreciate you sharing your story. Uh, and one of the reasons why I was so excited about this session is because literally like anybody on the call, you know, um, can draw from your experience, whether they want to, you know, volunteer or freelance or do part time or do full time or own a product or create a product. So there's, there's so many different things that you've done in a short amount of time that we can, you know, explore and sample from. Uh, so, you know, hopefully uh, everyone out there is taking notes and, and coming up with your questions. It's going to be a good session. Yes. Um, so January of 2020, I started thinking about doing a real world project and I came up with this idea, just a, maybe a case management tool, just sort of thought that through, started planning that out and started asking a lot of questions of the ombudsman who I saw worked extremely hard and, um, face to face meeting with them regularly. Um, I really got to know their role in the, the organization, asking them about the usefulness of something like this, you know, compared to what they were doing. In January of 2020, there was COVID already in the world. Um, and we were already dealing with a lot of crises. And just really quick, Mary, um, for those folks that, that maybe um, aren't familiar with what an ombudsman is, do, do you want to yes. go into that briefly? It's a great point. The ombudsman is a liaison between the command and the families. And so they act as a conduit, really. Their purpose is really to be there in a crisis. Uh, you might see them at events and they've got a table with resources because they do collect all those resources in case anyone ever needs them and calls on them. But primarily they're there. You get to see them and put a face to a name in case you ever do actually need an ombudsman and usually if you are in contact with an ombudsman it's not usually a great reason uh, you know there's been maybe a death in the family or there's uh, somebody sick somebody's trying to get hold of the sailor or vice versa it's it's a crisis moment usually that people are in um, so you're not going to hear from the ombudsman day to day uh, they uh, you'll hear from the command through the ombudsman and they put out newsletters of the ship's events and stuff. And so it's really important to get on their newsletters if you are still part of uh, command somewhere because they do, they are that resource and that direct line of communication. Yeah, I appreciate Thank the clarification. You Thank you. Exactly. Yeah, and we have Laura Etzler here who was the 2020 Ombudsman of the Year uh, 
So, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yes. So in January, we, I start to have this conversation of um, actually, they seem to actually really need this. And what does that look like? And so we, we start talking kind of in earnest of if I, if I actually could build this, would you, would you be interested in trying it? And so we, we started talking a little bit more seriously about it then came actual crisis. We had families we were concerned about. We had situations we had no um, way to help families with either. You know, how, how do you help a family um, who, where the parents are separated, there's only one parent home, doesn't know, one else in, know anyone else in the city, um, and has to go to the hospital, has kids at home who, you know, possibly been around COVID. Maybe there's an animal in the house as well. And, you know, who normal times somebody would just go in and take over. But who can you ask to take over during a pandemic? Uh, you know, it was just this unusual situation we were in. We were actually feeling the pressures and the concerns and the increase in communication was, um, I would say, overwhelming for the ombudsman. Um, in fact, I have a stat. Um, it was up in hours, up a seven hundred and fifty percent increase um, in just man hours um, for the communications that were going back and forth over the course of that first three months. Um, with that, obviously, it escalated everything, and then it would have its rises and falls. But um, in February, um, the amount of stress was got to just an overwhelming point. Um, I actually reached out first to a mentor and asked for a reference. Um, I was looking for a Salesforce architect who wanted to give back. There were a lot of people who were asking to give back. You know, there was the sprint for, you know, to create COVID solutions. So I actually submitted my idea to that. The uh, um, open source commons had a sprint as well, right about then. The same person who, con who I was connected with also happened to be a part of that sprint and active in the um, open source commons community. And anyway, so he, he came on to the team, um, offered to help start actually creating this in real life. Um, still, again, no plan to make it an app. This was just a tool for this team to help them navigate this onslaught of communication. And like within, you know, two weeks, maybe, everything kind of um, happened, exploded. I brought on um, another person uh, to assist us um, on behalf of the ombudsman and military families who also had Salesforce experience. But I wanted to make sure that families and ombudsmen were represented and sort of had somebody who um, was always going to be taking their their side, you know, not just from the technical side, not just from me. I had this idea side, but a third party to just weigh in on on whether this was benefiting or hurting or you know just the overall impact. And so that was our initial tiger team right there. After about two weeks, kind of just realized, you know, this is needed now more than ever. And so we pushed forward. We picked right back up and we worked seven days a week for months. Um, and we, we definitely appreciated the fact that the ombudsman at the time were contributing and really helping us you know, in in their spare time, they they were able to kind of help us figure out their use case, have discussions about the requirements, and and move that forward. In August, we launched the app after a kind of a long product journey. What I loved about creating Ombudsman Cloud Care, besides being helpful and being of service, was being a part of that Tiger team. And I really wanted to bring that forward. I wanted to kind of pivot and take that same teamwork dynamic 
and now make it profitable for the same people. Um, they had done so much in the world, so much good that I felt like they could do the same thing for clients, but it also be profitable for them. And that is really the birth of client cloud care. Um, so we kind of tie that, that teamwork along with being a go-giver, of being of service um, together. And so our, um, our niche really is nonprofits. We specialize in veteran service organizations, um, but we help various other nonprofits as well. And then we also support other consultancies still um, as customer success or their technical, if they want to remain in the front lines, they, we also provide the technical work. And uh, we specialize in managed services. That's awesome how you were able to take that need yeah. and then you yeah. know, realize there's a case management uh, use case behind it, create an app from it, and then you know, publish the app to help folks and then monetize it. So just a, a fantastic journey. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it was a big concern um, initially. You know, so we have this product, we get it out in the world. I mean, there's, there's a whole long story there, obviously. I'm kind of cutting it short because we could be here all day. That we, you know, you create the user guides, you get it ready, you've got to push it out in the world, but you really have to begin with the end in mind. And you have to start planning forward. And um, I, at the end, it was really important to me personally that the people who had devoted so much time and energy into this um, were able to um, pivot back and be successful and put that forward to you know their work experience at the next place that they were going or making sure that you know that was still part of their traje trajectory if that's where they started. So specifically right now, everybody who works for us is military spouse or veteran, but we are going to open that up to uh, any you know underserved um, population as we grow. We'll uh, we'll need to. I, I think that's just a fact, and I think it's just we want to broaden our mission that way anyway. But we do say that we're powered by military spouses and veterans, and that will continue. And we're really proud of the fact that you know we we're able to help employee i think we have i have eight military spouses two veterans right now so we're really excited about that and i and i don't see us stopping we're definitely on a growth trajectory and i'm really excited about that it's we you know, I have to turn away clients at times, you know, and as any business owner knows, uh, consultancy wise, especially, you know, utilization is a constant ebb and flow. And so that's, that's the thing that, you know, limits us from taking on more clients is um, sort of that balancing act. But, but yeah, we're really excited about it. I just think it really provides those military spouses who, are in that in-between state of where they have to care for family members still. Um, they have to balance their time. And the same thing, there are veterans who also aren't able to commit to a full-time position for various reasons. And um, so we help sort of provide that. And then clients can't always pay for full-time assistance. And so it works out nicely. And that's it, that's all I have. Do you have any questions? Thanks so much for going over that, Mary. Yeah. Um, and so to, to everyone out there, obviously, you know, I've got my list of questions, but I want to give you first crack. Um, but before we do that, let's go ahead and um, if you'd like to participate in a group photo, so, and I'll share that on social media and you can share it with your networks so that we can always be branding. So I'll give you a second. And while you're doing that, just get your questions ready and we will um, go from there. Got it. Awesome. All right, so as mentioned, I'll go ahead and open up the, um, the chat uh, window here. Um, feel free to raise your hand. And if no one has any questions, don't worry, I have plenty. Um, but I, like I said, <laughs> want to give you the first opportunity. So Stephen, you have the floor first. Hey, Mary, can you guys hear me okay? Loud and clear. Yes. 
Right on. Uh, so quick question. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. It's been phenomenal to listen to you. Uh, but I was curious, as you were onboarding your teammates that you had been working with, um, what was that process like? Was there a lot of pushback? Were they like, hey, I'm not sure? And if so, how did you kind of win them over to, to buy into you know, this company that you started? Um, so I only brought over one person uh, from OCC initially um, to this. And in fact, that's part of the story is um, I actually, I, I say I gave away, I gave away one of our, you know, MVPs, one of our um, admin. And I, after I did that, I said I would never do it again. And um, so one person came over who had never worked anywhere because she was number two, right? Like, so, um, but was our first person at Client Cloud Care. And I don't think that she would have gone anywhere else. Um, I could let her speak for herself if she's interested. But uh, I think that it was the opportunity to continue the team. Like we really have um, an amazing team. We continue to have an amazing team. I think it's all about working with a team that you love to work with. Um, I think that's a reason to work somewhere um, over, you know, wages and benefits and other things that could be alluring and i think we've got that in spades right on thanks for taking my question and steven you've got your hand raised you are next hi mary thanks for doing this chat i was just wondering with your part-time consultant how do you manage i guess when a client wants you know full-time output from a part-time person you know, if they're expecting a certain outcome in a week how, how do you handle right that? No, it's a good question because we don't take clients who expect full-time work, generally speaking. Um, we really match um, clients who are interested in that, that flexible part-time hours. Um, so that's working for their benefit. Um, and I match them with consultants who are looking for the same thing, basically. So you have sort of quite a vetting process that, you know, if you've got somebody who just does morning hours, for example, that, you know, they're not to be contacted after lunch or what, what do you do? No, um, because with managed services, uh, it's you set up the meetings, right? So, for instance, if you're the consultant and you're matched with the client, how you two set up the meetings is up to you. Um, and the client. And so you navigate what works for both of you, just like you would any other time. Um, and so it's it's definitely a, a partnership. Ah, thank you. Yeah, great question, Stephen. Um, so we've got a question in chat, and it looks like folks are, are kind of starting to ask about alternative paths to, to full-time employment, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this session, right? Because Having an FTE role is not the only way to go. There's freelance, there's part-time. So Jaconda asks, uh, what is your take on organizations such as Upwork to start as a solo consultant? I, I was on Upwork. I absolutely um, think it's a great place to start. Um, I don't think I got any opportunities um, that way. I know I got some offers um, for full-time opportunities uh, through Upwork. Um, certainly think there were offers there um, and you certainly especially now i feel like there are more opportunities than before in remote part-time uh, spaces so I, I think it's a great option i think it's a great place to start as an independent consultant awesome great question so i'll, I'll throw one out there on the floor uh, and so you, you talked about it a little bit mary i'm um, kind of the, the the growing pains of getting started, but what would you say? What would you say were the biggest challenges you faced in forming your company and getting it off the ground? And to kind of dovetail that question, how did you do it? Given that you know COVID was was and is a factor, and, and it makes everything just adds a level of difficulty. Right. No. Absolutely. Um, you know, the COVID has really i mean helped my business because um, being remote flexible part-time are all things that have been legitimized now <laughs> more than they ever were so um, it's it's to um, our benefit really that that we're in this situation where 
you know, Google Meet and Zoom calls are our norm. So that wasn't the case before. It was um, definitely a bigger struggle, especially for military spouses to find something that was a part-time career, you know, in the truest sense of the word, not just something to do for two years until you move again. Um, so to, to be able to have something where you get paid significantly to work part-time um, and be able to call it a career and build on it, um, yeah, it, it's definitely um, has gotten better, I think. Um, let's see, as far as challenges, though, other challenges. Um, I think, you know, with building a company, um, just the patience that it takes time. And um, it, I, I think it is a challenge um, because you want to start doing all the things. And it's in, during a pandemic, uh, some of those things like just basic business setup just take longer to get through, uh, you know, just the DBA took probably, you know, four weeks longer than it should have, um, you know, little things that just catch you. Um, so I would say the biggest challenges are actually around running a business. It's not the consultancy. It's not the Salesforce side. Like we all know that. Um, I have been an entrepreneur. I've had my own business um, and I was a consultant before, so I never really felt like I transitioned out of that phase. But to do it with employees is a whole nother ball of wax and um, a whole nother kind of headache, but also um, a challenge. So um, definitely the biggest challenge is just figuring out how to do that properly, how to you know, not get in trouble with states and you know taxes and all the licensing and the registrations and um, that sort of thing is is by far the biggest challenge is running the business um, so going from being an independent consultant to a consultancy with employees is is definitely um, there's a lot to learn so, yeah, I mean, that, that just blows my mind because I was a consultant um, for, for first full source and then Salesforce. And I can't imagine mm -hmm. taking my knowledge and then opening up my own consulting firm. So I guess my, my question, kind of my piggyback question is, you know, what resources did you leverage or how did you make that, that, that leap from, you know, being a consultant to being, um, you know, a consulting firm? Yeah, I mean, the... The leap came in that I, I felt like I could help employ military spouses and veterans looking for part-time work. I knew it wasn't going to be the next Sir Conte million dollar business in a year. You know, like that wasn't the goal. That was never the goal. My goal was to take what I had learned, take what I was doing, and then provide the same opportunities that I had been looking for. And I had figured out how to navigate myself. But now, but I did it by myself, which, and then in doing OCC, found the value of the team dynamic. Um, and then kind of working that together um, and, and creating this space for us to to work together, to be a part of the team, to use each other as resources, but then to also serve our clients. Yeah, I love that. So fueled by passion, um, it sounds yeah, like it's part, of, part of what the leap was. Right. Um, and so Carrie, I do see your hand, but uh, Jaconda has been waiting patiently with her questions in chat. So uh, she's got a couple, we'll go ahead and, and ask those. Uh, Jaconda asks, is client, is client cloud care open to new part-time consultants and can you provide a little bit more information on how your organization works? Um, yes, we are always looking for new part-time consultants. And I would just say the caveat to that is we're not looking for part-time consultants who are looking for experience you, and you're looking for full-time work. Um, there are fellowships for that. Um, if you couldn't do the Hire Our Heroes Fellowship because it takes a 30 hour requirement to do it and you need less hours, then you might be the right fit for us. Um, we're looking for truly people who want part time flexible. Now, maybe that means you stack this part time opportunity with some other 
freelance gig you've got going on, whatever it means, but you're committed to working part-time-ish with us. You could also stack with us um, and add on clients to your desire, but at no point do we ever guarantee that you're gonna have full-time hours is basically how we work. Um, so you have that option to increase your hours. What I find is that people haven't done that so far. They tend to be pretty content um, and want to continue with part-time, which is why they, why they pursued this option. Gotcha. Thank you for the, the extra clarification. Mm -hmm. Jaconda's further question was, uh, she mentioned she knows a male spouse that is certified and is PCSing uh, to Germany, uh, a permanent change of station for those that aren't military. How can I help her find yeah. employment as a consultant or as a part-time admin under uh, SOFA status or status of forces agreement? Uh, I mean, that, that was definitely a big, um, big issue for family members in Japan. I, I mean, just a huge issue. I don't know how they navigate that on their side because each installation is different and has their own rules and has their own policies that you have to apply through and go through. Um, regarding as far as us, whether we're willing to hire you overseas, absolutely. There is always work to be done. Um, and you being overseas uh, won't stop us and in fact could be a benefit to be on a different in a different time zone. Awesome. So it might actually be an asset. It absolutely could be an asset. That's great. And Jaconda, yeah, feel free to connect with Mary on LinkedIn. I posted her yes. LinkedIn um, uh, link earlier, but obviously she's pretty easy to find, as is everyone on LinkedIn. Um, so appreciate the questions, Jaconda. We're going to go over to Carrie, and then we'll come back to chat because there's a couple more questions in there. So Carrie, you have the floor. Oh, <laughs> thank you. There we go. I'm still working out the kinks in this virtual world. Um, I just simply want to say thank you so much on behalf of military spouses. Like, um, it's hard for me to listen to this stuff and be on camera and not get emotional. So, um, so just start. thank you. <laughs> I know, I know. So, um, it's it's you know there there might be people in the chat or on that are familiar with this world and that are not. And gosh, I don't know why I went on camera. Um, so just thank you. That's all. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That's awesome, Carrie. Thanks so much Sweet. for sharing that with us. And obviously that's why, that's why, you know, Mary does what she does. And, and that's a, a big part of the reason why I do what I do uh, to get back to those folks that work really hard um, to, you know, keep mm -hmm. us safe. And that's not just the service members, the spouses as well. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and head back to chat. And uh, so Verunda asks, um, how do I deal with tasks allocated? Uh, being a new time developer in my first real time client project. Um, and so Veranda, I'm not sure if, if you're working with sprints um, and, and your, you know, your project manager is, is organizing um, tasks based on that, but maybe, um, maybe Mary could, sh could share how her team organizes their tasks um, and, and provide some guidance there. Yeah, so we do have a project manager uh, and that is her job. <laughs> to be able to do that and do it, do it really well. She does a great job. Um, and if she's here, she's welcome to speak up. But I would say um, keep in close contact with your project manager. Communication is key. Awesome. Yeah, you can never go wrong by, by being in lockstep never. with your PM. So good advice. Yes. Um, Carlos asks, uh, so kind of going back to when I asked that leap of faith question, Carlos asks, any words of advice for those preparing to take the leap of faith? Whether that's <laughs> mental or, or process driven or what have you, you know? As far as the product, right? Was that the... I, I think as far as going from a consultant to opening up your own firm. Oh, oh, okay. Um, I, I, you know, I think you really, okay. So one, I already said it, begin with the end in mind. Um, know your escape clause, whatever it is, like have some kind of end game plan. Um, really think about what your goals are. Um, think about what your day to day looks like or is gonna look like. You know, are those things that you are really interested in? Um, and I, I, I come up with ideas all the time for new apps. 
And now I weigh them much more heavily, like on the, you know, do I want to spend the next year of my life working seven days a week to make this happen? And then it doesn't stop because you put this out in the world. It's your child. Um, you have to maintain it. You have to um, support the users. Um, and it's it's not going anywhere. Um, so, you know, it is now a forever, you know, part of our story and part of our, you know, week on a, you know, not a day, but definitely part of our topics of discussion on a regular basis. And in fact, we're actually um, having a sprint this Friday to do final testing for version three of the Ombudsman Cloud Care app. If anybody is interested in uh, chipping in for a couple hours on Friday for some testing, which is basically you download the new version three into a dev org and you follow um, maybe one to two page of instructions, see if it all lines up and give it the green thumb and uh, let us know if it worked. And that's basically the testing. So if anybody's interested, reach out. And you can put that on your resume as testing for an app exchange app. So if you're looking for experience, hey, yes. there you go. Yes, and the, and the bonus is you get to watch as a developer uh, gets the kinks out and I mean, actually like live in the code right there and then kind of opens things up part of the package um, and starts you know, working on it. So you can kind of watch him in his process, which is mind blowing. Yeah, user experience is huge, as we all know, in this ecosystem and getting getting the opportunity to, to influence that is really cool. So thank you for that, Mary. Um, yeah. We've got another question here from Justin, and he asks, what certs would client, uh, CloudCare recommend if someone wanted to pursue an opportunity with your company? You've got to have the administrator cert uh, as you know, just the basis um, to be client facing. Um, so definitely that beyond that, um, I would say, you know, bring it, bring your interest. What are you interested in? What are your soft skills um, and, and how can we utilize that um, to match you with clients? Um, so if you're interested in marketing, go after it, you know, go after those certs. Um, you don't, we don't, you know, have any minimum requirement of certifications um, or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, bring your interests, bring what you want to spend your time doing. And Carrie asks, as far as um, signing up for the testing, should she, should she or anyone else just reach out to you on LinkedIn? Yeah. Or, okay, yes. perfect. Yeah, that would be great. All right. So it um, doesn't look like, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, folks, I don't see any more questions in chat, so I'll go ahead and pose one here. Um, so you know, it, was, it was really inspirational listening to you talk. I'm going to go back to the, um, to the Ombudsman app about how you had um, a need, you, you filled the need with a Salesforce solution and then you grew it into an app exchange app. What advice would you give for those who, who have a great idea for an app um, and you know, that they'd like to publish, but aren't really sure how to get started? So maybe if you could walk us through, I guess with a bit more detail on, on those initial steps that you took and, and challenges you overcame. Yes. Yeah, I, I skipped over that because I was like, ooh, we're getting in the weeds. Um, yeah, so I mean, it's a it's a long process, and I would say you know start off with developing the idea, being able to articulate it, um, get user feedback, uh, do your market research. You know, is it needed? You know, it, what do the potential users think about your idea, um, and would would they use it? Um, I would do what I call the impact audit, which is the um, the beginning with the end in mind and the impact on your life. I'm not talking about the impact on you know anything else. I'm talking about on your life and and whether you know that weighs out. Um, ask lots of questions uh, to everybody you know. Build your network. Um, find mentors. Um, I and do that beyond even the military community. Um, there, if it's if it's an app with a mission and you truly believe in it, uh, that could be an open source um, app. Then um, get connected with that community. Um, you know, 
if it doesn't need to be a paid app, uh, then there are other resources out there than trying to put it out in the world yourself. Awesome. And obviously, you know, um, Mary, you didn't do this by yourself. You referenced the Tiger team and, and they helped you. And so if you could dive a little bit deeper into, you know, not necessarily like um, the names of folks, but like um, from a, a functional perspective, who was on that Tiger team and how did you go about sourcing them in case folks are looking for resources for how to form their own Tiger team? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important who, who you choose. Um, I had recommendation on, you know, I. I specifically said to a mentor, I said, I need somebody who's trustworthy. This is sensitive, you know, topic. This is um, people who I wouldn't want to have access to, you know, to everyone. Um, so it was important that they had some sort of military background um, and that they, they had the knowledge to be able to help and, and a go-giver attitude. Um, and so that was the architect. And then the um, I needed people who believed in the mission as much as I did, um, who understood the cause. And so uh, the first, you know, the first group of people uh, were people who understood what it was about, who believed in it, you know, sometimes more than I even did um, when the going got rough, um, who, you know, were willing to pick me up by the bootstraps and, and carry on. If I said, gosh, it'd be nice to have this. I mean, the next day it was in my inbox, um, you know, with very little effort on my part other than just coming up with ideas. And had that not happened, you know, we probably wouldn't, wouldn't have gotten it published. Um, so it really took a team of people to just get stuff done. Yeah, that's great. And when you were talking about your team, you you had mentioned mentors and Spencer had a related question and then he asks, yeah. where is a good place to find a Salesforce mentor? And I, obviously I have some ideas too, but yeah. Mary, you get first crack. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think groups, like I being active in groups. So, um, and also at your job, like I have, I have multiple mentors uh, who I really rely on, who I speak to weekly or on a regular basis at least. And um, I would say I've met them through groups. I've met them through employment, you know, clients um, and through, um, through friendships within the Salesforce military community. And then also, um, I've recruited people from my previous life into Salesforce, and so I brought them with me, which I think is, you know, the best idea. <laughs> yeah, that is great. And, and um, Raksha, I see your hand, um, and we'll get to you in just one sec. I just wanted to piggyback on that briefly to say, you know, th there's lots of resources for mentors. Um, Trailhead has, um, a, you know, a, a Trailblazer Connect program where they, they pair you with a mentor. Um, if you are a military or military spouse, there's Veterati. Um, so you can look that up, uh, you can Google it, and it's a, a platform dedicated to providing you with mentors where you can spend an hour in a one-on-one uh, -on -one conversation exploring any aspect of any professional industry. And that doesn't have to be Salesforce, could be anything. That's phenomenal. Uh, obviously, this is a, a mentorship forum, um, a little bit different style, it's collaborative. Um, so you know, if you spot someone on here uh, that you, uh, you know, have questions about what they do, um, such as Mary or any, any of the other co-hosts or even any of the other attendees, feel free to reach out. You know, if, if you folks want to post your um, your LinkedIn uh, links in, in the chat here, uh, we can all connect with each other. And this is intended to be yet another source of mentorship. Uh, and then I would just I would just echo what Mary said. The groups are really above and beyond where you're going to find those folks. And what do we mean by groups? Well, um, you know, there's there's Trailblazer community groups, um, so you can you can join any one of a number of, of thousands of chatter groups, or you can actually go to, to virtual groups, user groups, you know, developer user. Or I'm sorry, developer groups, admin groups, user groups, and then you have your Salesforce Saturdays. And so if you don't know what a Salesforce Saturday is, go ahead and Google that. Um, we had the founder of Salesforce Saturday on a few months back. She's amazing, but she put together this worldwide phenomenon where you gather with your peers um, and you talk about Salesforce and you learn and you, you mentor and you, you learn about opportunities for employment, for volunteering. Um, so you can attend those virtually uh, all across the globe. So another great resource. All right, uh, Raksha, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to start by saying uh, thank you to Mary for your information. The, the, the guide 
guideline you gave me that gave me another encouragement to go forward a step further what i'm looking into as well um see the market you guys are in us is completely different than the uk market and um i am struggling i'm not gonna lie to you but i am badly struggling still to get my idea coming 100 percent across i do have a very good idea at this present moment i'm trying to put it into people i do know in my network and uh, and people i do met and everything um but i'm still struggling to go beyond because it, until i don't get the salesforce um approval obviously you can't go further so how do you go about it and how would you help anybody that is on a level of where i am yeah i mean i mean that that is true like you have to get through salesforce security review um and there's yeah no way about it you have to go back and forth um until it gets through and um you know, I that, in a brick brick wall. That's the brick reason. Wall. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and and I, I wish I had um, some great answer. We were able to utilize open source comments to help push um, our mission forward. And they gave us a team of, you know, they connected us with a developer specifically. Um, who had worked on a previous uh, open source commons um, app and had gone through the process. And so he was paired with us to kind of help us get through the process. Uh, and then once we get it most of the way there, it then does get go to the open source commons team who, um, who then makes it all better and they do their magic and and really push it through um and without them i i would have gotten nowhere um so it's not much help to you i'm sorry <laughs> i wish i had better <laughs> news um if you have I, any connections that i can have that i can go yeah. forward with it afterward and you know again maybe i will get another brick wall but it doesn't matter at least i'll try somewhere maybe one door will open up one day yeah you never know you never That's know it. i know <laughs> thanks so much raksha um we've got a, a question from aaron in chat um and he's asking is there a uk option for mentors or will us based mentors take us under their wing uh, many of us have already connected but always feel free to to build the the one team mantra uh and so you know i don't to be honest aaron i don't know i, I would assume that veterati is open for um for anyone uk or otherwise um so I would take a look at that. Um, I think the only the only barrier would be, would be time difference, um, and then I would say obviously you know uh, anyone in here who, who um, you know would be willing to support you, um, I'm sure. So reach out to, to folks, uh, co-hosts or attendees, and then lastly, um, let's see. I was looking for the one other. Oh, so um, if you reach out to Jonathan Fox, Jonathan Fox is a military trailblazer in the UK. He's a Golden uh, Hoodie Award winner. He does a lot to give back to the community, and he would ha definitely have some some uh, local based answers to that question. Uh, so look him up on LinkedIn. Great great connection to have. And uh, Raksha, you have your hand raised. Yeah, Thank you, Dave. The is I wouldn't yeah. mind helping that person. I don't know who raised that question. Um, that was me. Okay, Thank Aaron, you. I do do run a group called Salesforce Women Power and Work Power. You're most welcome to join, and we do support mentoring uh, individually anybody that you'd like to be supported. Secondly, yeah. obviously, there are a lot of uh, admin and a developer groups, community groups. Uh, based in London as well as in other cities, you can join them and they do help mentoring. They do have internal mentoring systems as well. And if we can connect later and I'll, I can help you out there. Thank you very much. I'll, um, I'll find, I think we're on a women's hour thing a, a few weeks ago. Um, I'll hit you up now. Okay, cool. Thanks so much, Raksha. See, collaborative mentorship in, in action right here. That's awesome. Really sure. appreciate it. It's amazing. Um, so we are, we are almost out of time, but I, we've got a couple minutes left. If anyone has any last questions that they wanted to pose to the group or to Mary, uh, either raise your hand or just go ahead and post them in chat. I'll give you a second to do that while I finish posting all the, the comments that I'm posting because I'm a little bit behind multitasking, <laughs> multitasking at its finest. 
And if, if you're wondering, um, you know, if these comments are, are saved anywhere, they are. Um, if you go to the YouTube channel, um, there actually, there's a document in the description section that has all these links um, that we, we post there, um, so they're not lost. So I don't see any other hands raised uh, or any other questions in chat. And so we'll go ahead and, and close it down a couple minutes early. But before we do, I wanted to thank you, Mary, so much um, for taking us on your Salesforce journey and then walking us through how you went from you know, being, being a volunteer to a system administrator to a consultant to creating your own app and being a product owner to you know, owning your own consulting firm. Excited to see um, you know, client, CloudCare grow and, and what you do next. So thanks so much. Uh, it's been awesome having you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. And, and thank you all of you as well for spending time with us on your Wednesday evening um, to, to hang out with us and learn about product ownership as well as uh, you know, what the part-time work options are in the Salesforce ecosystem. So I would encourage you all to connect outside of office hours uh, to continue the conversation. And obviously you can join the conversation in the uh, LinkedIn group as well, which I've posted a link to and is always in my LinkedIn posts. So with that, have a great rest of your Wednesday evening and hopefully we'll see you next week. Everyone be safe.